Roku became our number two long uh, after we dropped Meta down the list. Um, the stock and, and the stock price and Catalyst have been pretty playing out pretty much as we expected. Um, and I say pretty much because, you know, you never get everything right, fundamentally. Um, but if you get the 60% of what matters to the stock, 100%, right, then that's all that matters, right? Um, and it's also been creeping higher on your uh, signal strength list, keep that notice, week after week. Um, but as I said before, we've been talking about November, December being this really important period for the thesis because that is where we hit the easiest comps for brand spend and, and CTV specifically. Um, so just to reiterate the fundamental view here, just a reminder, you know, last quarter's revenue growth rate came in uh, at 19.8% year over year, which was an acceleration from 10.8% in Q3 uh, and ahead of the company's updated gui guidance in early September of 10 to 15% growth at the low and high end. Now, again, they guided Q4 uh, to a pretty meaningful deceleration of 10%, uh, but that was also right in line with consensus. And if you just look at the revision trend cycle and all of our work, I just, again, don't really believe it. So um, I think that there's still going to be upside to numbers, especially as we're seeing the preliminary data come through for ad spend over the last week. Um, we've seen the look, well, it looks to be, you know, uh, a pretty strong recovery in uh, programmatic display and brand advertising spend. Um, we have to see how those numbers flush out and settle out here over the next couple of days, but that's so far what we're seeing, which I think is a positive for the thesis. Um, and as we also discussed last week, right, we believe we're entering this reallocate phase of the ad cycle where we're starting to see uh, money come back to mid funnel, top funnel, and brand platforms to drive bottom funnel efficiency, which would be to the benefit of a Roku and a Pinterest. Um, and you would also expect to see uh, Meta start to lose a little bit of market share um, as a result of that. Not saying negative growth for Meta, but just the incremental dollar being allocated to these other platforms. And then just lastly, you know, just a reminder, this is like driving this is not just the top, top line is obviously critically important, but it's really the EBITDA directory here. And so we're still miles apart of the street on the EBITDA uh, for EBITDA and cash flow for 2024. Um, you know, going into this last quarter uh, for next year, EBITDA estimates were 64 million. Uh, they've come up to 92 million, but I still think they can come in between 200 and 400 million. And if that's right, um, and there's not, it's not hard to get a lot of flex in the model, then I think the stock's going to track that over time. Yeah, just from a portfolio perspective, the way to deal with, let's just take three names, PINs is a med ticker for Pinterest, Roku, ROKU, and, and of course, Meta. You know, last week, Meta was at the, we're, we'd be long all three, right? So, uh, and re-ranking them does, as soon as Freeman re-ranks it and the things at the top end of its range, even if it wasn't re-ranked at the top end of the range, you'd sell some. So if you did that last week on Meta, when it was at the top end of its range, well done. Yesterday and the day before that, Meta was down. Okay, great call by Friedman. Yeah, I guess he called the the universe and got them to do exactly what he told them because, you know, like <laughs> I said, Pinterest and Roku ripped to the upside. So now what do I do today? Today I sell some Roku. It's at the top end of its range, and I buy back some more Meta. That's how you do it. Okay, uh, it's not that complicated to understand, but it is very hard to execute with discipline. That's the thing. You don't just do the work, as Arnold would say. You don't just do the work. You have to do it every fucking day, all right?